Okay, after some of the introduction about vapor pressure and moisture in air, let's go to the first example. Okay, let's see how the problems about relative humidity will be set. It goes like this. On a certain day, the temperature and relative humidity of air over a large swimming pool are measured to be 25 degrees C and 60% respectively. And we need to determine the water temperature of the pool when the phase equilibrium conditions are established between the water in the pool and the vapor in the air. Please use five minutes to think about this problem. Okay. Well, I won't wait for you. Okay. I assume that you have paused this video for five minutes. Okay. Let's see the solution. Here, we can see that the air temperature is 25 degrees C. Okay. And we also have the relative humidity to be 60%. Because we need to determine the water temperature of the pool, so let's find out the vapor pressure first. How can we find out the vapor pressure? The vapor pressure is equal to 0 0.6 multiplied by the saturated pressure at 25 degrees C. Okay, what's this value? In order to find out this value, we need to check the property table. So let me introduce a little bit about the property table in our appendix. Okay. Here, we have a property table and we have got a very long list of table. But looks that in this course, we are just interested in the first half of the tables. That means A1 to A17, okay? From A18 to A34, either they are not related to this course or have a very little probability of using those tables. So I just suggest you to know from 1 to 17, okay? And we have a list of the name of the title of the table here. And because we are finding the properties of saturated water, okay, so we should focus on, okay, from the title, we should focus on table A4 and A5. But what are the meanings of temperature table and the pressure table? Temperature table refers to if you have a given temperature, then you look at table A4. If you have a given pressure, then you look for table A5. In this case, because we are given the temperature 25 degrees C, 25 degrees C, that means we have a different temperature. So let's go to table A4. Okay, let's go to table A4. So from table A4, you will see a lot of quantities here, including the temperature, that means the temperature you are given, and the saturated pressure, and a bunch of properties. But don't be afraid, okay? because I will gradually talk about their usage, okay? We just focus on these two. We just focus on these two, because what we are finding is saturated pressure, okay? Again, what's our temperature? Our temperature is 25 degrees C. So let us go to 25 degrees C. 25 degrees C should be here, here. This is 25 degrees C, and we have the saturated pressure to be this value, 3.1698. Okay, so let us jot it down. So here, this saturation pressure is 3.1698. And from this, we can find out the vapor pressure here. I just take it to be 3.17. Okay. And you can find that that will be equal to 1.902 kilopascal. Okay. Because what we have found should be kilopascal, kilopascal here. So this one should also be kilopascal. And what do we mean by the phase equilibrium? Okay, phase equilibrium means that the whole bunch of air has the same pressure throughout. Okay, or we can say that PV at the water surface, okay, will be equal to the vapor pressure of the air. Okay, the reason is that for the portion of the air that has the direct contact with the water surface, it should have the same vapor pressure because it has a direct contact. But whether the water vapor can go to the remaining parts of the bunch of air depends on the vapor pressure of the whole bunch of air. Okay, But it is at a phase equilibrium. That means no more water vapor can go to the remaining parts of this whole bunch of air. So we will have this one should be also equal to 1.902 kilopascal. Okay. How can we find out the temperature of the water? So the temperature of water can be found because it has changed to a water vapor. It has been evaporated. So this temperature should be at a saturated temperature. 
at this pressure. Okay, at this pressure. We have the pressure. We need to get the saturated temperature. What should we do? Okay, let's go back to the property table. We can see that, uh, as I've said, pressure table, if you have a given pressure. Now we have a given pressure. So let us go to table A5. So table A5 is here. How can we find out the saturated temperature? Okay, again, forgot about the remaining column. We just focus on these two. Okay, and what we need to find is that we need to uh, have a 1.902 kilopascal. Okay, but we do not have the value. We just have 1.5 and 2, and these two number. How can we find out the pressure at a 1.902 kilopascal? Okay, uh, we have two methods. One method is a computer method. You just go to the computer, use some software, and get the value. But another method is frequently used in our course. That is what we call the linear interpolation. Linear interpolation. Because we just get the data points from the property table, we don't know how exactly the saturated pressure depends on the saturated temperature. We do not know the dependence. So what we are going to do now is that we approximate the relationship by using a line. By using a line. That is, we have a line here. So for example, this is T, this is P. We know that they have a relationship that P increase and T increase. So we have these two points. These two points are our known points. That means this one is 1.5 kilopascal, and this one is 2 pascal. Okay, and how can we get the value of 1.902? Okay, get the saturated temperature at a 1.902 kilopascal pressure. Okay, we just approximate it by a straight line. That means I have a line like this, and we need to find out this value. So something like this. So this temperature is from your table, 13.02. This is 17.5. Okay. How about this value? This is our target. Okay, this is our target. We need to find out the temperature here. How can we find out this value? Not that, because we have approximated by using a line, and a line has a following property is that the slope between these two points will be equal to the slope of these two points. Okay? Because these three points are collinear, so we would use the following relationship that is slope equal to slope. So, so we can find out the value by using, by computing the slope from some known points and also relate it to the unknown point. So this value is the slope between these two points, and this value is the slope between these two points. Okay, you will see that T will be equal to 16.62 degrees C. Okay, so that's our approximation. Okay, so uh, let me draw that here. I've corrected to three significant figures in this answer. Okay, so 16.6 degrees C. So we have finished this problem. Okay, let me review on what we have done. Okay, here, in order to find out the temperature of the water, we first compute the vapor pressure. We have this value. And because of the phase equilibrium, the whole bunch of air should have the vapor pressure equal to the vapor pressure at the water surface. So I equate them. And how can we find out this value? Okay. I have introduced a property table, and I have also introduced the method of linear interpolation to you. Okay, we just use the method called slope equal to slope, and then we compute this value. Okay, we will use this skill throughout this course. Okay, whenever you need to find some values that cannot directly obtain in your property table, then you just pick two points such that that property is between these two values, and then you just approximate it by a line and use slope equal to slope to find out this value, okay? So that is example one.